Welcome back, guys, to the Beyond Condition podcast, where I'm joined by two guests that have been on before, Rob and Emma. And this episode, I was actually just saying to the guys, is a really cool one because, first of all, we're going to be talking about success and how do many people quantify success? It's completely individual, of course. But before we jumped on, I was actually thinking about this. And before I sort of started following you guys on Instagram and what have you, I I, I started following you and then I, I've seen sort of how you put yourself across on social media. And then I thought, I've actually always seen you both as successful people. And then it got me thinking, I hadn't met Emma in person way back then. I haven't met you in person, Rob. Um, and how did I then come to the conclusion that you were both successful? And I came down to that. I feel like you both put across that you're both very passionate and also that you're human, which I feel is part of my moral compass. This is what I look for in people. And consequently, that's why I've, I've followed you for all this time. And I really value what content you actually put out, because I personally feel on Instagram, it's sometimes a bit like, do you actually want to put that content out from people that seem a bit robotic and everyone seems to be doing the same thing in the fitness industry. And I feel like you two are very unique. So I guess, first of all, is that how you're wishing to come across on social media? Of course. Um, well, for me personally, I don't, <clears throat> I don't really overthink it. I've always just tried to be natural because I was one of the, especially in, in terms of my industry with mindset coaching and such like, I was one of the first or the very, very early people on Instagram back in 2013, 12. I can't remember when it was. But um, so I never really thought about it because back then it wasn't really a thing so much to show off and stuff. It was people just putting pretty pictures up um, and that was it. So I just, I don't know, I suppose I just did me. And that was it. And um, I've always tried to preach to others to be true to yourself. So I just stay true to myself. And and I just say what I want to say. And, you know, something I always teach to clients is that you've got to stay true to yourself, but also your vibe will attract your tribe. And I very much believe in that. So what I do is just do me. Those people who like what I've got to say and how I teach things will follow me and those people who don't will go off and follow someone who's resonates with them and that's what you've got to do and I think there's enough people in the world to have a decent amount for each person just follow who you resonate with and if they seem to be real speak the truth and and just come across real to you then hey why not follow mm -hmm. that's what I do yeah I think for me a, a lot a lot of what Rob's just said like it's completely in alignment with how I think and I live anyway. Um, and I think that's probably one a lot to do with how I am naturally, but also it's definitely been nurtured from being friends with Rob, like on a on a personal level and also a professional level as well. I'm like, I'm the kind of person who is like a sponge. Um, and I really do, I really do absorb things that I think really resonate and that are important as well. And for me, I just think with social media, like exactly what Rob said, but just being your authentic self. And, you know, I think we all go through those moments of wondering like, oh, is someone going to like this post or what should I be posting? And I just think like, just put it out there. And the people who resonate with you will engage with you. And the ones that don't will click the unfollow button. So I think it's, yeah, it's so important. I, but I think you've got to be You've got to be confident within yourself to stand in your authentic self on social media and not be worried about being judged. Because mm. I think that's where a lot of people hold back. And I think in regards to the way the fitness is, industry is now, it's very like, it's very influencer-like. Yeah. So everyone's kind of singing from the same hymn sheet and trying to be different from the next person, but they're not really being that different. So we want to see personality and I think that's something that both me and Rob have given over the years as well in our in in our posts in our content in our story we're very true to ourselves um and I think that has just really created the audience that do like to follow us as well mm, yeah for sure I think that it's often the case that you'll follow people on something like social media and you define them as successful but like I said you know I'd never met you two but I would see you as successful 
And it's actually funny when I think if you ask people, so why do you think this person is successful? Why do you really want to be like them? Maybe they'd be like, oh, okay, so it's because they come across in a certain way. And actually, both of you, I'd be quite interested to know how you would define success. So where if someone said to you, are you successful? What would that mean to you if that question was asked? And, and your sort of answer to that would be interesting. I think for me, there's two, there's two different sides to success yeah. um one side being professional and the other side being personal so mm-hmm. personal for me is having fulfillment in my everyday life um and then on a professional capacity it's setting goals and achieving them mm-hmm. and that's success for me and also you know it's it for me for success it's important to be like a pioneer to be an original to be a creative and that's why I am at the end of the day I'm a creative so that's that make gives me an element in a feel of success as well mm, yeah for sure well, yeah I, I I echo what Emma said um it's all about fulfillment and and for me that's in both professional and personal if you're not fulfilled you're not happy it's that simple and I've worked with loads of people I've got one client who turns over 18 million a year and he's not fulfilled, he's not happy, right? Now, most of us um, would say, oh my God, if I made 18 million a year, I'd be ecstatic. Oh my God, I'd be so happy. But it doesn't really pan out that way. And a lot of people hear these things said, you know, it's not all about the money and blah, blah, blah. And they go, yeah, well, I'd rather have some actually, thank you very much. But it's really, really true. And I think even on a smaller level, if we come away from multimillionaires, and you look at some of the smaller things you've wanted, even if it was the latest mobile phone or something like that, and you've had to you know, work for it a little bit, how long did it really make you happy for? A week, two, three, you know? It's not long, even a new car. I mean, I've got a brand new car. I love it, it's fantastic. It's, it's you know, it's the 30 odd grand, you know, brand new, they're over 50 grand. But really i think it really kind of buzzed me up for about a week and then you know it starts to get dirty it gets rained on a bit of mud splashes on it and it just looks like every other car out there right so fulfillment is key you know when you go to bed at night you put your head down on the pillow and you're happy with your lot that's success Mm. and you know you could be living in the hardest toughest council estate you could work in the hardest, toughest factory for the lowest wage. You could go on holiday in the most rundown area, you know, um, and stay in some really rundown, broken down caravan or something. Um, and that's not getting at people who love caravans because my brother does. But um, I mean, a really broken down, rundown one in a rubbish area. Mm. But you could be really happy. You could be married. You might have a kid and you, you're super happy happy with your lot you know and you go to the local pub on a night and uh, you go home and chill out with your family and you're super super happy Mm. now for me that's fulfillment it doesn't matter you know because there's multi multi multi-millionaires out there that are not as happy as that scenario i've just given and um they're there so for me it's fulfillment and um Right now, I feel fulfilled. I feel good. But I've got goals that I'm still chasing. There are things that I still want to achieve. There's things professionally I want to achieve and I want to do. And um, that's different. If I don't hit them, I won't be unhappy. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to hit them, which will add, I suppose, to um, my overall fulfillment and everything else. But right now, Listen, I've got a beautiful daughter. I've got three other grown-up children. I've got a beautiful partner. I've got a lovely home. You know, I've got great friends. Um, I get to go away as a minimum once a year. Yeah, I don't know what 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 more. You know, if someone had a gun to my head right now and said, "What more do you want?" I don't. I'd probably start going into business then and say, "Well, I would, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do a best-selling book." a world tour, you know, for seminars, you know, there's loads of things I could throw in, but right now I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Mm, I think that what you've both said as well, I certainly resonate with, but also 
the elements of both of you are quite humble people. So yes, you're successful, I would say, in all areas of life, getting to know you more. And like I say, watching you on social media, etc. But would you say that that contributes as well, remaining humble to, you know, who you are and not getting too far ahead of yourself? I think I think the element of being humble is let's not forget, like, nothing, nothing that we have achieved or people see as successful has come easy. Everything that we have, we've worked hard for. So everything's come with some sort of struggle, you know, so. And I think that's what keeps you humble and grounded. And in and, and all honesty, like, I don't think either of us have any reason to not be humble. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I don't really know why anyone would not have a reason to be humble. Um, but I think it's just like what keeps you grounded is knowing, you know, maybe the struggle that you've had to get this success or, you know, the the trials and tribulations you've had to go through to be happy in your home life. And things take constant work. We're constantly trying to grow and evolve. And I think having that growth mindset means that you, we never get stagnant in one place and we're always looking to evolve and grow and be bigger and better in all capacities of life. Mm, yeah. Would you agree, Rob? Yeah. Um, I have a little issue with the word humble. Um, mm. and, and it's something I go over a lot with clients. Um, <clears throat> humble, if you look it up in the dictionary, it's got a very negative connotation, um, the, the, the actual meaning of it. And um, it talks about having a low estimate of yourself or um, to feel less important or grand than somebody. And I get why we say the word humble and everyone understands it intellectually. But I just like to think of it more as just be a nice person. Yeah, you know, person. I was going to um, say, well, how would you reframe that? Humble. Mm. humble has a a, a kind of um, um, a connotation of almost bowing down to people. So being humble, yes, in the in the context that everybody takes it in. Um, yeah, I just think it means be a nice person, and I just try and be as <laughs> as nice as I can be. But I'm human, you know. I have my downsides. Um, I get angry, I get pissed off about things. But as I teach, um, when I work with people on, on their mindset, I'm just not down there very long. Um, I call it going to zero um, in part of my training. And, uh, you know, everybody goes to zero because they're human. But it's how long you're down there for that, that really is the difference, the differentiator between you and somebody else. So there's not much, and I say this a lot to my clients and I challenge myself on it all the time. In the last, Christ, 10 years, um, there's not much that's kept me down there for long. I won't be, you know, pissed off about something for a whole week. You know, it's it just, it's a waste of energy. It's a waste of time. And if someone's put me in that position, you know, that they've made me angry or pissed off, I will get rid of that energy very, very quickly if I can, because it's not serving me. Mm. It's not serving me. And I don't believe anybody is worthy of keeping me there for a long extended period of time. So mm. if that makes me humble, then I'm, I'm, I'm humble. I just try and be nice to my fellow man as much as I can. Just be me. Yeah. For and sure. just touching on that, Rob, when you, um, just because you mentioned the word energy, and not allowing ourselves to be in that negative energy space for too long or giving somebody our energy and allowing them to take our positive energy. That's something that I have really worked on in the past probably like four to five years mm -hmm. and just learning that, you know, when you hold on to that negative energy or that negative feeling, all you're doing is affecting yourself. So mm -hmm. if we can learn to really release that and let go, um, and then I think as a knock-on effect, it just helps you stay in that really better, positive, high energy, high vibrational place a lot more. Yeah, for sure. I guess a good question for you both as well is, Emma, for you in the studio and, and Rob, when you're working with people, if you come across this from, for, for you, Emma, you know, someone that comes into the studio and they think that they've sort of nailed their posing and you've then got to break that down and say, well, actually you need to do X, Y, Z, or maybe they've learned it for a different federation or something like this. Mm -hmm. If there's quite a lot of ego present, is there certain things you do or do you just sort of go in and say, look? <laughs> um, 
I think like I just try, I never try and um, come from like, this is how you should do it. And I think this, I'm very, I'm very diplomatic and soft but firm with my approach. And if someone doesn't want to take on board what I'm saying, I'm like, that's fine. Like I can give you my opinion, but if you would prefer to go in, you know, make your own choice and not take in my opinions and my suggestions, then that's fine. Like I'm not going to help. It is what it is. If you think that you want to do this category or if you want to do this style of posing, I will always explain why I think what I'm trying to teach them is better or looks better. Mm. Um, and typically, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time they, they agree. But if they don't, I could just say, well, you know, this is your decision to make. If this is what you want to do on stage, then that's absolutely fine. But mm. this is what I would recommend. Um, so I'm, I'm firm, but I make sure that it always comes with a nice tone and a nice energy as well. Yeah, for sure. And what about you, Rob? If you come across as someone that's potentially a little bit ego driven, what in terms of coaching when I'm working with them? Yeah. Um, I get a lot of pushback <laughs> <in> coaching. <laughs> I get a lot of it. Um, because the whole thing about what I do is about challenging your existing beliefs. So you're gonna get that. And and it is very, very difficult for people. The first thing I do with everybody I work with is we talk about perception and and um how to shift your perspectives. And um if you don't shift your um perspective about things your perception of things the way you see things you will never change mm. it's that simple and and that's it if anyone's listening to this right now and they're going I disagree that's a perfect example <laughs> you know yeah. you, you're stuck so um and it took me a long time to learn that when I was learning all about mindset and everything else because I'm I'm a, a very strong-minded person I'm very fiercely um, strong and most successful people are um, about my opinion on things and it's it's took a lot of work to be able to sit back and listen to someone else and go actually maybe they've got a point you know so I get it when there's pushback from clients as well so I get it you know and and it's very very difficult but you know I go through a process and and show them how to how to overcome that and how to overcome the challenges that life throws at them and things like that and we always talk about how you can control your attitudes because life is hard right and it will always throw up tough things at you and um once you truly truly understand and appreciate and accept that life is hard life no longer becomes hard yeah. And I know that sounds a bit, you know, maybe people might have to stop that and play it back and hear that again. But it's so true. Once you truly accept that life is hard, it no longer becomes hard because life, um, without getting too deep, the universe, the life, whatever you believe in. Isn't hard or easy. It just is. Yeah. Yeah. We it is call what you it make hard. it. Mm. Yeah. So once once you understand that it no longer becomes hard. So what I mean by that is if you're, and this is something we're going quite deep with clients, so you can oh, appreciate I, love I, can't, this. I, love I can't do a whole, whole training now, but but if you're driving your car and you get a puncture, we all get mad and we believe that life's done something bad to us because we're in a rush and why me of all the people, why me now? But what we don't think is the 150 or maybe 500 journeys we did in the car and never got a puncture so we say oh life's hard why me can you believe of all the days i get a puncture but come on if you're in your car and you're driving somewhere is there ever a good time to get a puncture you know it's like you 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 never want a puncture do you so life isn't hard life is just life and once you can start to really get above that um life does actually become a lot easier. And that's why, like, I was laughing with one of my clients the other week and they were saying, really, do you really not get that pissed off for that long about things? Because I know I stay in it for like two weeks or something. And I'm like, no, because I, I've just done this for so long. It's just the way I think. That's it. It has to be something that really takes me up here for me to stay in it for any longer than, you know, a, a couple of hours tops. You know, I'm not. I'm just not going to give it that energy. 
Mm. Um, actually, there's a really good book people can check out, and um, it's called The Road Less Travelled, and um, by Scott Peck, Scott M. Peck, I think. And um, funny enough, I got this book from one of the Spice Girls, right, inadvertently, and it was because one back in the day when the Spice Girls were at their biggest, one of them was pictured in the newspapers on holiday, chilling on holiday, and in their bag, they had this book sticking up. And I thought, what's that book? Me being me, I wasn't looking at the picture, I was looking at the book. And I was like, what's that book? So I checked it out. Anyway, I got the book. And the first sentence, and correct me, I don't want everyone ringing me or messaging me if I'm wrong on this, but I believe, because I haven't looked at this book for years, but I believe the very first sentence in the book says something along the lines of, life is hard, full <laughs> stop. And then it goes on to say something along the lines, and I'm paraphrasing here, but something along the lines of once you truly understand that life is hard, it no longer becomes hard. And that's where I started to get it from, you know, back when the spat, I don't even know how long ago that was 20. I don't <laughs> yes. know. Well, yeah. Right. So I started to look at it from that. And that was what changed my point of view about how hard life is and how you can change your attitude, shift your perspective, and go, do you know what? Actually, the fact that I got a puncture, the fact that I got let go from my job, the fact that my business went down and I went bankrupt, the fact that I had a car accident and, and I had a near fatal car accident and was airlifted to hospital, the fact that all these things are, is that really life hard or is it just life? Because every day you look on your phone or pick up a newspaper, you hear about someone having an accident or someone being airlifted to hospital or so, but we don't really think anything of it. You just flip the page and carry on. But you don't think life's hard for them, do you? You just, it's just life, isn't it? Oh, there's something on news, it's bad. So that's it. But when it happens to us, <laughs> that's a different matter. All of a sudden life becomes terrible and it's picking on me and it's hard. So if you can shift that perspective and start to think, actually, it's just life. Honestly, life becomes so much easier because you don't have this expectation that every day is going to be perfect. Mm, yeah, for sure. I think as well, actually, some of what you've both said there, about going into like relationships you know you can end up I've certainly done it I'm talking from personal experience and I've seen it with clients where you get into this sort of victim mindset and you can go from one relationship to another whether that's friendships or actual relationships where you always feel like the lesser person or you feel like oh this person's better than me and you're always in this you know lower vibration or whatever we want to call it and then consequently particularly relationships you know with a partner you can go from the same person to the same person to the same person because you don't feel your worth and I guess that for both of you it'd be a good question to ask how do you start to realize that actually you know you being your unique self which we've spoken about that is enough and actually being true to yourself you will attract the right partner because I think we've all actually done that ourselves in life as well. I think I think it's just doing the the inner work and having an open mindset to want to do the work as well. Mm -hmm. Um, there's always so much growth to be to be done and so much to learn about ourselves and the obviously the reasons why we're maybe looking for those those types of relationships, whether like you said, it's relationship or friendship. And there's always an underlying reason as to why you're seeking out these types of partners. Um, and where does that, you know, where does that lack of self-worth come from? You know, it can go back to childhood, it can go back to early relationships or even school days. So I think you've got to really identify the root cause and then you need to do the work um to reprogram or you know re rework those dendrites as Rob would, would maybe say mm -hmm. um to just shift your perspective on yourself it's really all about self-love really mm -hmm. um and understanding that you know we're all different we're all unique in our own special way we're all beautiful in our own special way like I've always had um I've always had this mindset not even mindset but approach that when I meet people, I always feel like everyone's beautiful in their own special way. Mm. And that might not be like conventional beauty as we see on social media or in the magazines, <laughs> but, and I've always, and I've just always felt like I, I've been able to see that in someone, whether that is their, 
their soul and their energy or whether it's their physical being. And it's almost like sometimes we need to just stop and see that in ourselves as well. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm human. I have moments where I'm like, oh, I'm not this, I'm not that, I don't look like that. And you, I think it's hard because of the world that we live in, social media, what we're comparing ourselves to, especially as females, I think it's very, very intense. Um, but I think, you know, we need to just sometimes try and take a step back and be grateful that we are unique and also that, you know, we we are healthy. If you are healthy, then, you know, like it's just being grateful, practice yeah. gratitude and what you're grateful for. And, you know, if you have those issues of self-worth and unpicking and identifying where it comes from and how can I move forwards and work on that and just become a better version of myself. Mm -hmm. Rob, would you agree with everything that Emma said there? Yeah, I taught Emma most of it. Of course, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I told you, I'm like a sponge. <laughs> she is. She's got all my words. But we've but done a lot of work together. And I've had to work yeah. on a lot of these inner workings with Rob. There's been a lot of shit that I've gone through. There's been a lot of challenges that I've had. And I do, I was just thinking there as well, as Rob was talking before. We, and like you said, like you, Sarah, viewers, has been um, successful and confident we've got shit going on behind the scenes every single day that people don't know about yeah, just because totally. people aren't putting it out there doesn't mean that there's not stuff going wrong and personal challenges and relationships like things constantly need work but like rob was saying don't look at life like it's hard it's just life this is what we have to do to evolve and grow and want to be better more kinder nicer people and that takes work daily because we all come from That's challenge and the majority of us have got trauma or bad experiences and and things like that that have happened earlier in life so it's just learning to navigate that but trying to come out of the other end in a better place as a better person yeah if you think about it you know the people we look at and admire film stars and pop stars and all we're always reading of all their traumatic backgrounds and lives that are going on and relationships aren't we and they're multi-millionaires living in beautiful houses in beautiful countries in beautiful by the beach and all that so <clears throat> life's just not hard it's just life you know you've and got all the money class. you've got yeah yeah you've got adulation you've got all the money you've got everything that you think you'd want and then you see them and you go why why is Britney shaving her head off why why is this person going into rehab why is this person killing themselves yeah. you know Life is just life. And if you don't, as Emma was saying there, if you don't do the inner work, you're going to bring it from one relationship to another. It's that simple. And something I talk about a lot is, is beliefs and patterns. So once you've got a certain belief, it then leads to patterns of behavior. So you've got to change the belief to change the pattern of behavior. And until you change the belief, you will do the normal pattern of behavior because your body has to be congruent to your thoughts. It's that simple. You can fight it, you can hold it off for a little while, but you will always be congruent again. And this is why when I'm talking to people about going into new relationships, I always talk about six date rule. Come uh, on, it's share, something I'm not share. talking about. If you don't time. know, you need to get to know. I need to know. Yeah, yeah. It's something I'm still I'm still working on uh, a book and everything. And in fact, I've just been with um, a coach of mine and I'm just working on a load of stuff now. Um, but that will be in a book at some point, the six date rule that, that I made up. But um it's all about changing your beliefs so that you change your patterns. Because like you said. If you don't, you'll just meet the same kind of person over. I even did a post about this not long ago. If someone goes back just a couple of weeks, the reason you're meeting the same people, the same situations over and over is because of you, not because of the people that are coming to you. And that's why when people say, why do I always find dickheads or bastards that abuse me and da, da, da? why do I always do that? It's about you because all it's you're doing them. is ignoring red flags. We all see the red flags at the beginning, but because we like them or they're attractive to us or whatever, we ignore them because we try to make them fit a certain box that we want them to fit, but they're not quite right. And it's very difficult to walk away when you actually are now attracted to them in some way, shape or form. So you've got to do the inner work. And until you change those beliefs 
your patterns of behavior will still be the same. And, um, you know, you need to really look within. It's difficult to do because quite often those beliefs are holding you together, so to speak. And again, this is something I can go into in a very deep way, but ultimately, sometimes when people are shaken out of their beliefs, it really interrupts them. It, it really changes their whole worldview and they don't want to let go of it. So our brains naturally want to hold on to it and um, just carry on down what we call the path of least resistance because it's easy to do. So you just do it because it's easy that's why it does it so you've got to you've got to do the work and overcome that and make a new path from your old pathway and then go down that pathway and then everything changes and it can change rapidly as well um and you look back and you think wow who was that person it's like night and day when you've done it you literally look back and go I would never put up with that behavior again. Never, not even for a moment. How did I even do that? And it's it's almost like when I work with clients, it's like a light bulb moment. They literally are like, why was I doing that? But when we're feeling down and feeling a bit low and <clears throat> maybe you've had abuse or something else in another relationship and they've stolen your energy, stolen your strength, you do go into the next one being humble and you just want that need to be accepted mm -hmm. and you will stay in that need and do things and put up with behaviors that you just wouldn't normally. Um, but you don't realize when you're in it. So yeah. it takes a bit of work, but you've got to do it. I, I if you want happiness, myself and Sarah forward. can resonate with that. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. And what you said, Emma, about loving yourself. And I love, <laughs> Rob always says woo-woo. And I, I sometimes say it because it wasn't until I loved myself and I was prepared to be single for the rest of my life if I needed to be, that I found Matt. Because I truly believe, I will stand by that, that it wasn't until I could work on myself and go, do you know what? I'm okay on my own. If I need to stay on my own because I, I can't compromise for the rest of my life. I'm just, yes. I can't do it anymore. And I got, Reach. yeah, it's like you're rock bottom and you're like, look, I cannot do this anymore. And you try and you try and you try. And then it's like, I've, I've got to do, you know, I've got to break away. And I'm sure there will be people listening that do compromise. And yes, of course, there's levels of compromise to a certain degree. But with Matt, mm. we don't need to compromise. It just works. But, you know, if I could give mm. this gift to everyone, I would. And, and understand it's not, it doesn't just happen. You don't just meet someone and, and everything's magical. But we put effort in without needing to because I feel he's the right person for me, of course, you know. Yeah. Well, you help each other. You help each other move, you know. And that's what happens. And you, you might you know, do something that before the other person was very tough about and strong about and every, and this person isn't, and they're very open about it. Or you discuss something that's not, not acceptable to you, to both parties. And, and it just goes very easy and they go, all right, yeah, cool. Oh, I didn't realize, sorry, boom, done. It's never talked about again. And you think, wow, that was a huge deal in my last relationship. It was huge, you know, and, and uh, that's, that's part of it. But Again, a lot of people, it is a very, very difficult thing. It's something I work on with a lot of people. And it's in, in terms of changing behavior, there's certain steps in it. And it depends also where people are at in those steps, because there's loads of there's there's five or six different steps that people are at um, that you have to then take them at those different steps. And in psychology, it's called um, transferical, transferical, trans theoretical model of behavioral change and um um in there you see the different um points that people are at and then you can take them from that point and help them move forward um but it's some deep stuff is that but it's it it, it is what it is but you have to do the inner work mm -hmm. if you don't you're going to keep doing the same behaviors and that's why you see people just going around spiraling all the time, all the time, all the time. And they don't want to let go. I've got clients. I've got one now that says I, I'd leave him, but I don't want to be alone. Yeah. yeah. So it's that perfect example. So now we're working on that and building her self-worth up and her self-love so that she can be alone and realize that actually it's not that bad. Mm -hmm.
you know I love and also what people find stuff. just let me say this what people find if people are listening right now and you're going through this right honestly what people find is once you make that move and you're alone it's totally different it's like the universe knows you're alone and you start to get hit on more you get chatted <laughs> up more you, you the world just changes it's like it knows you don't even have to go out because people say oh well I can't be bothered you know going out and all but it does change it does change if you're open and you're you you just um the universe just seems to know it just it knows serves. when you're the universe fully always over serves. It, that, yeah sure yeah that's when you're fully over it though that is mm -hmm. yeah things like almost fall at your feet like sometimes I think how is all this happening at this time like it's like the universe is looking after me and like you say Emma serving me and I don't know if you come across it but I think sometimes when you do get to this point in life people are still like well, surely something bad's gonna happen now like you said life is hard but actually you you can be happy and it's like but wait like can I actually be happy and it's sometimes hard to believe isn't it <laughs> Yeah, um, that thing about, <clears throat> oh, surely something bad's going to happen. We call it catastrophizing. Um, it's when you've gone through a lot of bad things over a long period of time, you just think it's going to continue that way. Yeah. But nine times out of 10, you're bringing that into your world because that's how you're thinking. So you have to change the way you're thinking. You, you know, there's just no way of getting away from it. You have to go back to perspective shift your perspective shift the way that you view your model of the world we call it and you have to shift that and start to do a bit more of the inner work so that your perspective is different and then everything changes you have to remember if i look out the window now the world that's out there is the same as if you look out of your window now it's just houses people cars walk everything is the same but in everybody's mind, they've got their own map and model of the world, right? And if your model of the world is that the world is a really tough, horrible, nasty place where everyone's out to get you, from an hour of waking up out of your bed, turning on TV and looking on your mobile phone, you will find lots of instances to support your belief that you've got. Mm. Now, if your belief is, hey, yeah, the world's tough, but... There's a lot of beautiful people out there. There's a lot of opportunity. There's some great opportunities out there, if I look for it. And um, most people at their heart are good, nice, loving, caring people. Within an hour of getting out of your bed and turning on the telly and looking on your phone, you will find lots of things that are going to back up that presumption, right? Mm -hmm. So that then means... Everything comes back to what's your model of the world? How do you how do you see the world? And what you have to do is you have to shift perspective. If you're not seeing it very good, you have to shift perspective to look for the good and see more of that because then you will get more of it. And it's very hard for people. This goes back to what you were saying about woo-woo. It's very hard for people to get their heads around that because they think it's woo-woo. But yeah. Something I've been working a lot with clients now is a shifting perspectives. We talked about that. And it's like, do you know when they say, oh, I don't do all that woo-woo stuff. I don't do meditation. I don't do yoga. I don't do breath work. I don't do um, mantras. I don't do all that. And my answer to that is, <clears throat> yes, you do. Because everybody does. Yeah, Everybody's doing it. And this is important. So again, anyone who's listening and goes, oh, I can't be bothered with all, all this woo-woo stuff. Listen to this everybody does it it's the only thing that's different is the title they give it and what i mean by that is <clears throat> when people say to me um i don't do mantras you know going in the mirror and saying i am confident i am confident i am confident what a load of bs i'm not confident right yes in its own right it probably wouldn't work for you especially if you don't believe it right but people have to remember you are repeating things to yourself over and over and over every day all the time. That's a mantra. It's just you don't call it a mantra. You just call it, I'm just saying stuff in my head, right? It's still a mantra and it's still forming your map of the world and also who you are, your personality, who you are. So you're doing it anyway. All a mantra is, is something you're controlling. You're saying something in control rather than allowing your brain to just say, 
ruminate over and over. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Still a mantra. You're just not calling it a mantra. You're just thinking I've got some negative thoughts. Still a mantra. Um, so when people say they don't do things um, like meditation, mm. everybody meditates. But what most people call it is daydreaming. Yeah. Right. You know, when you catch someone just wistfully looking into the distance and you go, hey, hey, I'm talking. Where, where, where were you? <laughs> and they go, oh, sorry, I was daydreaming. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing. You know, it's 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 just having a bit of meditation, a bit of downtime. And it's just thinking and being at one. Right. And you can lose yourself, can't you? you there's traffic and everything, but you suddenly couldn't hear it because you was off miles away, as we call it. People say, oh, well, sorry, I was miles away. Right. It's the same thing, but if you put one of these new age words to it, all of a sudden people are like, oh, I don't do that, you know? Mm -hmm. But we all do it. We all daydream, we all talk to ourselves. So we all do these things, but we're a bit triggered when you give it that new age word as, as it's called, but it's not a problem. And I think once people can get over that, then they can use these techniques to improve their lives. Mm, and improve that internal talk you know as such and it's definitely something you know we talk about competitors and bodybuilding I mean mm. bodybuilders are crippled by negative self-talk and you know everyone is to a certain degree but in a physique based sport like it's absolutely mental isn't it you know and right. when I'm sure Emma when you look back at your journey as a competitor like are we ever happy are we ever in a spot where it's like wow look at my physique I, I'm really proud of myself here it's always on to the next on to the next can I grow muscle here can I get leaner here etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's hard because yes you need to keep striving for more to be successful in any area of life to a certain degree like goal setting like you've both agreed but do we ever go actually wow I've fucking achieved one of my biggest milestones of my my life and I don't know if there's any tips you could both give in regards to when we talk about physique development, how you can actually notice what you're achieving without getting too caught up on a pro card or being this or being that per se. I think it's quite difficult in the bodybuilding industry because the nature of the beast is that you are looking to be bigger, be leaner, to beat that person that came first and you came second. Unfortunately, I think it is the, the way the industry is. I think you have to be very strong minded to be able to step out of that mindset and almost like be in the present and say, OK, I did X, Y and Z. This was really good. Um, I think a really good tool is to try not to be in competition with anybody else and be your own competition and if you can just beat what you brought previously if it's your first show did you tick all of the boxes did you listen to your coach did you do your pose and practice did you bring everything you needed to bring on stage was the was the package maybe the best that you could have like that you could maybe have in the future no because we're always going to be looking to achieve more um but I think it's just about being able to be to be grateful and appreciate the work in the now um like I said you know looking back I definitely had moments in the bodybuilding world and competing where I'd win a title and I'd be like oh great but next what am I going to do next and what's the next title and now when I look back it's only now I've, I, I don't compete anymore and I've retired I'm able to step back and go actually fucking hell like I got a UK title a British title a world title I got two pro cards I got first do you know and it's very hard in that moment to appreciate the the wins because yeah. we're so focused on right what's next yeah 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 it's so tricky and yeah. I just think unfortunately it's a toxic industry yeah for sure and it is it's hard to sit with your achievements. I actually saw you shared someone's post on your story not long ago about someone that had won a IFBB pro card and thought that that would offer her the fulfillment we started with. And now she's not going to compete again because she's realized it wasn't really what she wanted. No. And that's why, like I was saying earlier, there is, you know, we've all got issues from previous times in our life that usually that's typically why most of us end up in bodybuilding yeah. because we are looking for some sort of fulfillment, self-worth, um, identity, um, significance, you know, 
yeah. we we all compete for different reasons and i think there's very few people that compete for completely like untoxic mm. no negative reason we're, we're all trying to fill some sort of void when we're bodybuilders you yeah. know i didn't have a partner i went through traumas i went through losses i i, I moved from dancing to feel I needed another reason to feel significant. So I switched from being a dancer to a bodybuilder, which gave me significance, which then as I've come out the other side of it, I now realize that that was ego. Yeah. yeah. I needed to feel a certain way. I needed to look a certain way in order to have that kind of significance and value and self-worth. And now, now I don't have, I, I'm no longer a dancer. I'm no longer a bodybuilder. I don't look a certain way. It's been a massive shift for me to accept my my who I am and my own self-love. And I think that's why when people are within that bodybuilding machine, it's really hard to have that complete self-love. Mm, yeah, for sure. I'm guessing you work with people that Emma's sort of describing there, that you get athletes like this, Rob? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's easier to count the ones that aren't like that, that... that... Um, I don't think there is any. Um, listen, you the, the thing I talk to them all about is control the controllables, right? Um, you've just got to control the controllables. You can't control what the people are doing. You can't, you know, looking on Instagram drives everybody insane in that game. Um, you've just got to control the controllables. And like El Emma quite eloquently said, you've got to focus on, you know, have I done the work? Have I eaten correctly? Have I trained hard? Have I done the posing practice? Have you done the basics, the little minutiae, the tiny things? And if you focus on that and nothing else, and, and if you can get super blinkered, and if you look at a lot of the top, top champs, you know, I've read a lot of stuff that they've put out, you know, the Olympia winners and things like that. They're not too fussed looking around. Half of them don't, don't even know who's out there, you know? They're so busy. They go to the gym, they put their hoods up, they, they do their thing, they go off and that's it. And they're just focused on being the best version of themselves, of, of getting themselves right. So I think that's all you can do. And then it's down to how strong is your mind to keep on that for the whole year and just keep doing everything nonstop. Now, again, it depends on what you're about. So in sport, you've got people who are results focused and then you've got some people who are purpose focused. Mm -hmm. So you've got to find out what you are. This is why you get so many people like Emma even who get to pro and then they give up. They call it a day. They go, yeah, I've done it. I'm happy. Now I'm going to go on a different path because they, they, they want to find a new purpose or the, a new thing that drives them a new raison d'etre, as I like to call it, a reason for being. You've got to, you've got to have someone to get out of bed for and, and be driven by. And once you lose that, you, you need to get out of the game because the game is brutal, as we know, and it does your body no good at all. It's not healthy. Let's face facts. It's one of the most unhealthy sports. It, boxing's very similar in terms of dieting down and everything, but it's not as brutal. They don't have to be down there for as long a period of time sometimes. So yeah, it just depends whether someone's results driven or purpose driven and, and then they've got to make those choices. And once you've made those choices, it's easier not to look at other people then. And another thing I talk to people about is just remember a, a slight reframe that we do is that you're an athlete and just, just focus on the fact you're an athlete. So your body isn't going to be the same all the time. In fact, I've just had this conversation with a couple of my clients recently about you know, because it's been extremely hot weather here in the UK um, <clears throat> at the moment. And if you're in a growth phase, you can't put on those lovely floral dresses and look girly and very twee. And you've just got to accept I'm an athlete. That's what I do. You know, if someone's a rugby player, a shot putter, whatever, it's the same for them. You're an athlete. You know, if you're a bodybuilder and you're going through a growth phase, you, 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 unfortunately, you're not going to be able to feel, you know, like a, a, a little nine stone, yeah. um, little twee thing. And that's just how it is. But you're an athlete and you've got to look at it like you're going to get plaudits and benefits in other areas. And that's your thing. And it was, it worked really well for them having that little mindset shift of saying, do you know what? Yeah. 
I'm not a, in inverted brackets, normal everyday person. I'm an athlete. And my body is going to go through three or four changes throughout the year. Well, lots of changes, but three or four major changes throughout the year. And you just got to accept that. And if you can't, guess what? This ain't your game. Mm, mm. It. Simple as that. Just that and simple. you know what? Being on the on the other side of that, like no longer having those thoughts and feelings about, you know, how you might look and it's summertime and you want to wear less clothes, but you feel a little bit self-conscious. Now I look back and I'm like, fucking hell, I look mint. I look yeah. mint. Even like you don't, and that's the great, that is one of the great things about bodybuilding. You ain't an average show. You don't look like everybody else. So I think if we can remember that and that almost like, I'm sure you've said this to me in the past before, Rob, it's like a job. Your, your, your job is a bodybuilder. So you have to have these off-season moments. You're going to be super shredded a few times a year. And it just, it's part and parcel. And if you can just look at it from a positive perspective of not everyone can do this. And also we 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 need to have these moments, but also just give yourself a pat on the back. Like ain't, ain't not everyone's rolling around like this, mm, you know? Yeah. And also remember, <clears throat> this is why you have to go back to are you results focused or purpose focus because yeah you, you, you have to remember why you're why you're doing it you're going to be in the game what 10 years max right depending how good you are if you're very very good you might be a bit longer but you're going to be in the game for five to ten years at your peak right so it's not long to give up if you're driven mm -hmm. in the game so mm -hmm. just tell yourself look for these few years i'm going to go all in the negatives, I'm going to have to take on the chin. The positives, I'm going to love. That's it. Then after that, you've got years, probably from what, 35, 36, 37 onward, you've got years to, you, you, your body will go right back to normal. Um, I've I, th th There's loads of bodybuilders, we all know. You look at them now and they've given up, they've retired, and you wouldn't even know they were ever a bodybuilder. Right, so your body will Hello. go back to normal. But you, you look no, no, Emma, no, you put your hand down. You put your hand down. You're, you're still, you're still what, what? You're the one percent. I got of the called a CrossFitter on want. holiday. <laughs> yeah, but CrossFitters normally look really good aesthetically. But the sport, however, questionable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Emma, Emma, you're not winning on that one, Emma. You need to, you need to pipe down a little bit. We, we did have a little. Um, we actually did have a little coaching session about that whilst just on holiday. Yeah, we did. We did. You know, what I mean, Emma, Emma, having a little bit of a limiting belief. I there still, I still needed a little bit of a Rob Lighty chat. Yes. <laughs> it was like moaning about her body, and I just looked round the whole hotel and the resort and the pool, and there was hundreds of people around, and I went. <laughs> Your body's probably the best one here. <laughs> it's like, and you could go to every other hotel along the strip, and it'd probably still be in the top one percent of every single hotel. So you need to pipe down and just chill out. There's but women on, the, on here. On that note, who... as well. But on that note, <laughs> that's why you know when I was talking about before about identity, and yeah. we we become mm. so attached to that identity of not we we're not average people like we spend so much time being the person that stands out from the crowd um and and looking different physically and walking walking into a, a place or or a, or a, a pool or a restaurant and people look because you look different and that's that's the conversation we were having weren't we like you know it's hard yeah. it's hard to let go of that identity but i also now acknowledge that that is significance as well and that's not always a great thing mm, yeah yeah it's seeking significance it is for sure and, and that's it and I, it's ego that's ego it is ego exactly it's ego yeah and actually i would say for sure i come across people that get into the sport because you actually mentioned it before rob on a pod where people at their gym are going wow you look really good and in that small space yeah you look good to gem pop or maybe people that aren't as serious yeah. about the gym and then they get one hell of a fucking shock when they do a prep go on stage and there's athletes that are going to place higher than them now that doesn't mean mm. that you're not good enough but like you said there emma about you can aspire to do that in xyz years but i think that people find themselves in a prep and they're like fuck this is really hard i don't know if i can do this but then suddenly they've told people when well, I'm competing on this yeah. day I'm a bodybuilder 
And then to try and come away from that, I mean, I, I don't know if you come across mm. people and, and how you would actually empower someone to go, do you know what? You probably shouldn't do this anymore because you're not doing it for the right reasons. Um, <clears throat> I don't tell people anything. So yeah. my job as a coach is to coach people. So I let them come to that realisation themselves. But uh, sometimes I might manipulate the situation if I know it's bang obvious. But in general, I, I come to that realisation themselves and, and help them then deal with that um, that transition of of that decision. Mm. So I don't I don't make the decision for them, but I let them come to that decision and help them get to that decision. Um, and deep down, most people know, you know, most people know there's a lot of people carrying on a little bit longer than they should for other people for their family, for their friends, for other people. They feel like they're letting somebody down. So if anybody's listening to this and you're in that position, just stop. Yeah, yeah. It's, it stop. can be tough, but actually these people aren't the ones having to go and do cardio at half four in the morning or eat fuck all, you know. You you really do need to have that sort of tunnel vision you mentioned, Rob. And actually yeah. just popped in my mind, Emma, when with posing, when people aren't doing their posing practice and perhaps it's down to these reasons do you sort of is that something you come across and you would have influence over or is that more with their coaches you such? yeah I I can tell when you know I get an athlete that's all in yeah and they'll listen and they'll do everything and they'll apply themselves and then I know what there's, there's, there's the other ones that I can tell them till I'm blue in the face and they're still going to come back in the next session and be doing the same errors yeah. um and that's just the two the two the, the two different different athletes that you have you have the ones that you know they want to fully commit fully immerse themselves and then there's the other ones that are just kind of like surface level and unfortunately they're the ones that just make up the numbers and I can only you know take the horse to water but I can't make it drink everyone gets the same skills from me in the studio but it's how they go away and use them um and That's mindset yeah. 101 exactly yeah. it's mindset it's like why, what's your why why are you doing it and and I was just thinking as well, as well as we were talking just there, I never competed for anybody else. Yeah, same. I compete every single show, every single prep. I did it for me. And I was not trying to do it for the family, for the friends, for the, the crowd, the fans. Never. No, it was no, always no. for me. And I think when you do it for yourself, I think that you you just do it differently. Because mm, yeah. you're passionate and about it. And it's easier to let go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think as well, you, what you've both said about standing on stage knowing you've done everything, that is a level of success. I always feel success from getting to stage, being able to perform and being grateful to be with other athletes. You know, I've I've won, I've placed, I've come second, all of the different things. And I know you have, Emma. And actually, when you stand on that stage, you've now your posing practice, etc. It's like, I'm going to fucking kill this because I've earned my spot on the stage. And it feels good. You feel empowered. Whereas if you haven't maybe done all of that and you haven't ticked the boxes, it's like, okay. And even if you've won, could you have looked a bit better if you've worked a bit harder and back to that sort of athlete mindset and what you're aiming yeah. for, I guess. And that of course is then going to go over into your reverse out and your post-show period, because if you're not doing it for the reasons of wanting to be an athlete, this is where you said, Rob, you know, people come out of the sport and they look completely different because they've probably you know gone into this space where it's overeating etc because actually their why isn't to be a good athlete as it were if you know what I mean yeah and it depends it, it, it a lot of it depends on psychologically where they're at when they come out of the game because some people might come out of the game very down depressed and yeah you know full of anxiety and and that affects them and then some people come out of the game and they feel great and they give it their all and they're ready and they're happy and they're content and they they just move on. Um, everyone has these whimsical moments, I think, where they look back and go, oh, I really got the buzz of being... I mean, Christ, I've been out of boxing for 30 years and I still <laughs> miss the buzz of... Nothing beats the buzz of being a gladiator, walking up into that ring and um, going into battle with another man and um, the roar of the crowd 
and everything that goes with it it's 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 an amazing i mean talk about it now i can get like goosebumps and hair standing up on the back of my head but um you move on you know you know when it's your time you move on and then you go and seek out a new um challenge a new purpose a new thing that you want to do and you go and hit that hard and do it you know and that's why again it's about defining you know whether it's results or purpose driven and um and you find something else and you always will you you, you know you've got to find something else to keep you excited you know if you leave something like that that you've been in a while and you've got nothing you know you're going to work in a call center say or you know nothing wrong with call centers i've done it before anyone i have as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah um um but you know, I always think try and find something else to replace it with, then you won't have such a big slump. Void, you don't and... have that void. Yeah. 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 I've got to have something else. Maybe it's maybe it's a business, maybe it's uh, another it sport, be, I think, yeah, it can sport. be anything. Yeah. 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 Just to help you along. I think sometimes as bodybuilders, it's like, well, I'm not a proper bodybuilder if I do other things because I have to be doing steps. I have to be at the gym. I have to be doing posing or whatever <laughs> else. But there is definitely pockets of time. And actually what I wanted to ask both of you, because I know you socialize outside of business, as it were. And I love the Instagram stories, of course, of Emma Cartwheel and et cetera. Um, and <laughs> that is, that's certainly another reason that actually for me added to you two being viewed as successful in my mind, because you look like you're having such a good time when you're enjoying life outside of business, outside of bodybuilding, whatever it may be. And I definitely think this is the missing part to a lot of people's life because they're scared to have fun. They're scared to go, OK, I'm going to have a night where I don't work. You know, that's success in itself because you're actually enjoying life in the present moment. I'm sure you're both. Agreeing. Really, we're just really we're just crying in the background it's all fake i hate this you know it's it's, it's not it's, real you like that it looks so much fun <laughs> like those guys <laughs> you know do you know what you i know think what? plays a massive sorry that plays a huge part in this is the 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 how bodybuilders appear to be living their lives everyone wants to look hardcore everyone wants to look like I'm just a bodybuilder. I'm just lifting. I'm not eating out. I don't do anything. It's bullshit. I'm it's telling true. you now, there's bodybuilders out there that are partying and you don't know they're partying. For sure. Because they think they need to look the most serious. Because if I look the most serious, I'll get more clients. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when did this whole facade become so intense? Yeah. When did I know we when. stop? I know when. I Tell know me. when. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Instagram it's so changed toxic. the game. It's bullshit. It's, it is. Instagram changed the game. Perfect example. I used to go to um, the hardcore bodybuilding uh, gyms before Instagram, 20 odd years ago, right? And you'd have bodybuilders outside the gym chatting, smoking, it. chatting away, enjoying it, having a fire girl, having a chat. And it was normal. It was normal. I used to join in back in those days when I smoked. And we'd all join in, right? Everybody was doing it. It was normal. Instagram came along. You see nothing. You see nothing of that now because it would be frowned upon if they're like there with the fag. All right, guys. Well, I've just done a um a back a back and bicep session. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. And it went really well. It went really well. Do you know what I mean? So they hide it. To give this illusion of um this perfection and it is bs i mean i go out i see bodybuilders doing drugs in the toilets all sorts of stuff going yeah. on but you, nobody sees it it's bs mm -hmm. i would say to anybody who's trying to emulate that for real get a get a life and enjoy yourself i don't mean go in toilets and do drugs um <laughs> but i mean <laughs> But, yeah <laughs> just don't snip that bit <laughs> but i mean go out have fun go to parties but you just regulate it don't you and you just make sure it goes into um your um 
the, the calories you're allowed or whatever. You know, if you're having a blowout at the weekend, that's fine. But then just compensate. It's not hard, but do not lose your life. You could be in this game five years, six years, seven years. Do not lose your life for a game that may not be your... Be if, you're, if you're good enough to maybe win Olympia... I'd say you have to go hard. If you're going to know, yeah. yeah. It's a bit different. <laughs> yeah. But for the other, that's 1% of the population. For the other 98, 99%, get alive, have fun, do you, because life's short, it does go quick. And that young part of your life that's between, I'd say, 20, 21, and maybe 40, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the prime years, I would say, um, even though I'm in my 50s, I like to think I'm prime. Um, but that part of your life, I would say, do not lose that because you think that's what you should do. And you're just a, um, I wouldn't say just, but you're you're a bodybuilder that is not going to probably win Olympia. You know, mm -hmm. don't don't miss out. Don't miss out. Have fun. Go on holidays. Drink. Party. You know. Do whatever we are. Yeah, have fun, do cartwheels in the back garden, have barbecues, have alcohol, have a bit of a drink, you know, just have some fun because then you'll look back and you won't feel like it was all for nothing. Mm, yeah, actually, you before we have the balance, I, I think that before we wrap up, the, a good question I could ask you both is there a hobby or something that you enjoy doing that no one would know that you do? Perhaps each other would know, but is there anything you could share? <laughs> the people go no way <laughs> i've got a few go on go um on. so wait, pro people probably know this already because i post it on my instagram but i am training to do a latin american competition are you which is a style that i didn't really learn or or master when i was younger but i did touch on ballroom but i do i've been saying for the past well me and me and rob used to go to salsa together and even then i was saying i want to do like i want to do salsa and latin american and and i never really got around to it but this this year i've started training with a professional ballroom latin american dancer and i'm going to be doing a competition hopefully in january but i've already said to him i am not stepping on that dance floor until I look like the pro. So it might be January, it might be later. I'm happy whenever it is. Um, what else do I do? I love to play tennis. Oh, people like I don't know that. A tennis outfit, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love a good outfit, love a good costume to wear, <laughs> tennis, and also last year I started skiing. Bloody hell. I'm an activities girl. We like yeah. bike rides. Me and my partner, we do bike rides, we play tennis together, we go skiing together. So, um, but yeah, the Latin American thing is that's probably like Rob was saying as well. I'm kind of uh, purpose driven. Yeah. So for me, it's like, okay, right. Next thing that is for me, that's what I'm going to do. So compete as a Latin American dancer. Oh, love it. So other than salsa, Rob, any, anything up your sleeve? <laughs> um, yeah, I wish I'd have kept that going hardcore because that'd be awesome now. Um, Imagine how great would be that. Uh, um, <laughs> um, for me, I love to play table tennis and not many people know that. Um, I've even got like a, a, a very expensive thing in my cupboard just here, a uh, table tennis bat and uh, or paddle as it's meant to be called. Um, uh, so I like that. I also do a lot of running at the moment and I'm running in um, the Leeds Abbey Dash 10K next month. Nice. And... I'm thinking about doing the London 10K um, in 24, next, early next year. Um, so I'm getting big into it. You know, my my running trainers are nearly 300 quid. So I'm seriously invested now. I'm like a runner. I'm, I'm, I'm following all the people on Instagram. I'm learning all the, the nuances <laughs> of running. And um, um, maybe I'll get some running clients going forward. I don't know. I've never had a running client. So let's let's look at that. So I'm big into to all of that sort of stuff. Um, anything. I love sport. I love sport. So I'll always have a go at something. Um, but apart from that, I haven't really got much time to do anything else. I obviously go to the gym. I do a lot of weights as well. Um, so that's that's pretty much it for me. And I occasionally play chess. You've missed one thing off, Latte. Go on, go on. What's that game you called that you pull the sticks out of? 
What's the plunk? Kaplunk. I'm the I'm the I'm the Kaplunk world champion as well. <laughs> Rob and my partner Danny, they like have a running tournament of Kaplunk. <laughs> So that's what people actually don't know, like forget the running, forget the table you see tennis. That, you see, this is this is this is what we're on about, Sarah. You see, this is this doesn't get on the gram. You see, no, this, this, <laughs> this, this, this doesn't this, this doesn't get serious. on the gram. This is this is people's highlight reels because kaplunk's just not that cool. It just didn't make it. But maybe, maybe next time that's going to get on the gram. <laughs> well, if anyone listens and they do have a game of that at the weekend then of course tag away but of tag course us, yeah. we want to see <laughs> thank you both so much for coming on again you two are the vibe thank you <laughs> always a pleasure always thank a pleasure. you so much thank, thank you, you guys i'll speak to you soon bye, bye. Ciao.